and Army's greatest need to continue fighting is weapons, but things are not going well for the Russian Army. The ammunition stock of Russian Army is decreasing day by day. Russian soldiers are facing major problems due to the decline in ammunition stocks. The information coming from the battlefield today showed how big the problems the Russian Army was experiencing. We follow all developments in the battlefield for you for the continuation of independent journalism. You can support us by using the super thanks button below the video. Let's start if you are ready. There are many reasons for the ammunition crisis in the Russian army. The first reason for this crisis is the problems in Russia's governance. The Putin administration in Russia is implementing repressive policies. A problem that occurs in all repressive regimes is also occurring in Russia. Merit crisis. Putin is putting his most loyal people in critical positions. Many of these people People do not have enough knowledge and experience in their work. But when they brief Putin, they always say that things are going well. This is leading to a massive rot in Russia's state institutions. When Putin decided to invade Ukraine, he called a meeting of Russian commanders and defense ministry officials. At this meeting, Russian commanders told him that Kiev could be captured in just a few days. Putin then asked to be informed about the status of ammunition stocks, but the officials not wanting to reveal the failure of his mission said that Russian ammunition was sufficient. Putin came out of this meeting thinking that Russian army was the most powerful in the world, but this was not the reality. Soon after the Russian army began its invasion of Ukraine, the truth began to emerge. The number of weapons in the Russian army was not enough for a long war. The Russian army started to distribute very few bullets to the soldiers because it was feared that the stock of the bullets would run out. All arms factories in Russia increased their production. But none of these production was enough because the Ukrainian army managed to establish a huge superiority on the battlefields. The Ukrainian army has been conducting strategic operations targeting ammunition depots of the Russian army. The missiles and weapons in these depots began to be destroyed. The losses of the Russian army were increasing day by day. The Kremlin was especially alarmed by the huge drop in the number of tanks. The strongest part of the Russian army was its tanks. These tanks have very effective cannon systems. The shells fired from the tanks could kill many soldiers. The Russian army thought that no army could resist these tanks, but the Ukrainian army discovered their weakness. The barrels of the Russian army's tanks could turn 360 degrees, so they were prepared for any attack from the environment. However, the total inclination of the tanks Paris was only 30 degrees. This left the Russian tanks completely vulnerable to air strikes. Russian tanks have very strong armor systems. However, when the tanks barrels are damaged, it becomes impossible to fire. The Russian military did not pay much attention to this problem because it was not thought that any fighter jet could carry out attacks precisely enough to target the barrel of a tank. The Ukrainian army also has very fighter jets. This led Putin to rely too much on tanks. But there was one thing Putin did not calculate. Ukrainian army drones are highly accurate. These drones are supported by cameras and artificial intelligence systems. This makes it possible to hit the target with pinpoint accuracy. Ukrainian soldiers managed to damage the barrels of Russian tanks using these drones. This renders the Russian tanks unusable. These clever attacks by the Ukrainian army are causing great damage to the Russian army. The Ukrainian army is also conducting operation against Russia's weapons stockpiles, according to the latest data shared by the Ukrainian Defense Ministry. The total ammunition losses of the Russian army are as follows 3,436 tanks, 6,723 armored fighting vehicles, 2,463 artillery systems, 488 RSV 253, air defense equipment, 303 aircraft, 289 helicopters, 2098 operational tactical level. UAV's 873 cruise missiles, 18 ships and boats, 5,330 automotive equipment and tankers, and 246 special equipments. The exact number of ripples and bullets destroyed is unknown. However, 
It is known that the biggest ammunition problem of the Russian army is in guns and bullets. The Russian army tried an interesting solution when it did not have enough weapons to distribute to the soldiers. Arms depots from the Union of Soviet Socialist Republics, period, were opened. All the weapons in these warehouses were distributed to the Russian soldiers. However, most of these weapons were rusted. In addition, the effectiveness of these weapons, which were produced according to old technology, was very low. These weapons, which often jammed, caused the Russian army to suffer more losses. Russian soldiers received only 50 rounds of ammunition for these weapons. Such a small number of shells has left Russian soldiers helpless in some war zones in Bahamut, where fighting has been going on recently. Both armies are fighting at close distances by digging trenches. British intelligence announced that something very interesting happened during the fighting in this area. According to British intelligence, Russian soldiers started using shovels when they ran out of bullets. Many Russian army soldiers were killed in hours long fighting in backwoods. The surviving soldiers continued the fighting, using the bullets of that soldiers. But after a while, the Russian soldiers ran out of bullets completely. Desperate Russian soldiers hid in the trenches. But in this area, there were about 100 meters between Russian trenches and the Ukrainian army trenches. Thinking that all the Russian soldiers in the trenches were dead, the Ukrainian soldiers started moving towards the Russian trenches. They planned to infiltrate the Russian army trenches and seize Russian weapons. But when the Ukrainian soldiers entered the Russian trenches, they found something very interesting. Russian soldiers tried to attack Ukrainian soldiers with the shovels. They used to dig trenches. Russian soldiers trying to hit the Ukrainian soldiers with shovels looked like desperate. Ukrainian soldiers managed to neutralize Russian soldiers who were fighting using shovels. However, they were all quite surprised that the Russian soldiers had to use shovels. This incident revealed the accident of the ammunition crisis in the Russian army. Russian soldiers don't even have enough weapons to fight. Russian soldiers want more bullets and modern weapons, but the Putin administration cannot do anything about it. Russia cannot buy weapons because of the sanctions imposed by Western countries against Russia. The Russian army, whose stockpile of weapons is dwindling day by day, is having difficulties to continue the war. Experts analyzing the reports published by British intelligence emphasize that the Russian army may soon have to withdraw from this war because Russia cannot find enough equipment to fight. What do you think about the ammunition crisis in the Russian army? What do you think about the Ukrainian army destroying Russian ammunition depots? Do you think Russian soldiers will mutiny if they don't have enough ammunition? How do you think the ammunition crisis in the Russian army will affect the war? While the relentless war between Russian and Ukrainian forces on the Eastern Front continues, the Ukrainian forces are trying to make moves to change the course of the war. The high performance of the Ukrainian forces was a great source of morale and enabled the Ukrainian forces to make more forward-looking moves. Ukrainian forces carried out intense attacks on Russian support points throughout the war. The location of these support points could not prevent the Ukrainian forces. An attack carried out the other day also showed us how determined the Ukrainian forces are to take advantage and what kind of Russian military elements they are targeting. Let's take a closer look at these very strategic attacks by the Ukrainian forces and the war strategy of the Ukrainian forces. Ukrainian forces accelerated their attacks on Russian military elements and facilities supporting the Russian occupation of Ukraine on the territory of the Russian Federation. Russian forces have an undeniable advantage over Ukrainian forces. However, the Ukrainian forces carry out very strategic attacks so that the Russians cannot use this advantage in an attack that took place the other day. Ukrainian forces inflicted great damage on the air power of the Russian forces. An explosion occurred near the airport in the Russian city of Yeysk. Yeysk Air Base is 460 kilometers away from the Ukrainian southern fronts. There was also an explosion and a fire at a Russian flight school base in the Krasnodar region. 
Subsequently, an explosion and fire were reported at the oil depot in the Krasnodar to support 580 kilometers from the front, after a very violent explosion at the Yiskir base. A major fire was reported at the training ground. Although the news about the explosion and fire was denied by the Russian Ministry of Emergency Situations, it was seen in the images that the fire continued for a long time and many emergency teams were sent to the region. At the airport in the city of Lysk, there were Su-34 fighter bombers, the most important weapon of the Russian Air Force. However, the fate of these six aircraft is currently unknown. It is very likely that six Su-34 fighter bombers were badly damaged and rendered unusable by explosion and fire. For the time being, we can qualify these planes as missing. Yeesk residents shared on social media platforms the evidence of explosions and fires in the ACEC region. Although the explosions were proven by satellite images and civilians in the area, Yeesk Regional Governor Roman Bublik claimed that the fire broke out on a training ground where military exercises were held. Except for Governor Roman Bublik's statement, no official statement has been made yet. However, looking at the photographs, it is obvious that the military fire did not occur as a result of the military exercise. Although the Kremlin government and the Russian army refrained from making a statement on this issue, we can say with peace of mind that the explosion and fire were caused by the unmanned aerial vehicles of the Ukrainian forces. When we look at the geographical location of Yisk, the Ukrainian forces have the capacity to carry out this attack. The Yisk region gives Russian forces a significant advantage in the Azov Sea and occupied Mariupol. Yisk is located 70 kilometers across the Sea of Azov from Mariupol, which is occupied by Russian forces. Yisk Military Airport is only 200 kilometers from the Barmut district, where fierce fighting took place, and the airport has the power to support the invasion operations in Barmut, which has become the main focus of the Russian forces. Besides, Yisk is located only 460 kilometers from the southern front line, which is one of the main focuses of the Ukrainian forces. This makes Yisk an important target for Ukrainian forces. The region may seem distant when you look at the numbers, however, Ukrainian forces have also carried out drone strikes to more distant points in recent days. A series of incidents and explosions occurred in various parts of Russia that appeared to be related to drone threats. On the same day, many explosions occurred in the depths of Russia due to an unmanned aerial vehicle attack. These attacks are thought to have taken place from surprisingly remote location. Let's take a closer look at the attacks on the military installations deep in Russia, which have become recurring targets for Ukrainian drone attacks. Krasnodar is one of the regions most exposed to drone attacks by Ukrainian forces. Krasnodar is of strategic importance for the Russian invasion plan. At the same time, its proximity to the Crimean and eastern Ukraine fronts and being an important support point for Russian forces made Krasnodar a key target for Ukrainian forces. Very close to the explosion in Yisk, an explosion and fire broke out at a flight school base located near the city of Krasnodar. As always, the Kremlin government and military declined to comment on the explosion. Russian authorities have yet to confirm whether there were any casualties or equipment damage. As a result of our research, we found that the flight school that was exposed to the explosion was in the city of Adygea, south of Krasnodar. The flight school is almost twice as far as Yisk Airport. From the points just mentioned, it is located approximately 460 kilometers from the Barmut region and 630 kilometers from the Khorasan region. Another attack, which was carried out at the same time as the Adigia Flight School was carried out at a distance from other attacks. An explosion and fire broke out at an oil depot in the Krasnodar territory. The biggest feature in targeting this oil depot is that it both supported the Russian forces in the Ukraine invasion plan and was linked to one of Russian President Vladimir Putin's close friends, Igor II. Igor II is also the former Deputy Prime Minister of Russia. Returning to the details of the incident, 
the infrastructure of the oil depot belonging to the Rosneft company was damaged as a result of the drone attack. The exact number of drones that took part in the attack on the oil depot was not disclosed. But judging by the photos of the locals, the attack had extremely serious consequences for the oil storage base. Based on photos taken by local residents, it was determined that the fire that started after the explosion was quite strong. Its consequences could not be eliminated for quite some time and fire and a huge pillar of smoke could be observed from a distance of several kilometers. Emergency crews who came to the area had difficulty in getting the fire under control. Extinguishing works continued for a long time. The point of the attack is quite far from Barmut and Kherson. The fact that the Ukrainian forces are launching drone strikes at such great distances indicates that the Ukrainians are willing to end the war very quickly. The Russian Ministry of Defense made a single statement about all these explosions. The Ministry of Defense noted that the Kiev regime is trying to use UAVs to attack civilian infrastructure targets in the Krasnodar region and the Republic of Adygea by trying to portray targets used as military facilities as civilian facilities. The Russian Defense Ministry wants to distort the event as Ukrainian forces committed war crimes. However, when the targets are examined, it is seen that there are points used as military facilities. Well, what kind of advantage will these attacks give the Ukrainian forces? As we all know, Ukrainian forces are preparing for a multi-pronged counterattack in this process. Ukraine has two goals. The first of these targets is the Crimean Peninsula. The Crimean Peninsula is the point that will ignite the collapse of the Russian Federation. With the return of Crimea to Ukrainian control, the credibility of the Kremlin government will be shaken and it will be difficult to focus on occupation operations in eastern Ukraine. For this reason, Ukrainian forces have given priority to Crimea. After the Crimea is taken, Donetsk and Luhansk regions will be cleared without losing speed. While the Ukrainian forces are advancing towards this goal, they must also eliminate the advantage Mariupol has given to the Russian forces. Mariupol was largely devastated early in the war, but it's still important to Russia because it's the largest city Russia captured and currently controls in 2022 and is also on a crucial supply route. Ukrainian forces continue their attacks in this direction before launching drone strikes in and around Krasnodar. Ukrainian forces attack several strategic points in Mariupol. Among the targets exposed to the attacks of the Ukrainian forces are a steel factory used by Russia as a military base, two fuel depots and an arsenal in an airport. Ukrainian forces are advancing very systematically to the great victory. Russia's elite 155th Brigade is reportedly refusing to advance on the Ukrainian town of Vulidar after suffering catastrophic losses at the settlement's mine-laden crossing point. The armored division appears to have mutinied following orders to drive straight into a heavily fortified minefield which has been dubbed the Corridor of Death following repeated futile advances. Vulidar has resisted Putin's suicidal wave tactics for months and nearly wiped out the brigade towards the end of January, now reinforced with powerful American anti-vehicle mines. Putin's elite brigade which served in Syria and has been in Ukraine since the start of the war lost 130 tanks following sustained orders to attack the position and is today made up mostly of inexperienced recruits. A spokesperson for the Ukrainian military told the Kiev Post, the leaders of the brigade and senior officers are refusing to proceed with a new senseless attack as demanded by their unskilled commanders to storm well-defended Ukrainian positions with little protection or preparation. Ukrainian forces around the town of Vulidar have been locked in fierce battles with Russia in the east for months. The battered mining town is a hellscape of burned-out buildings and artillery bombardment. But Ukraine's use of mines has exacerbated the Russian difficulty through the winter making a sustained advance. Video footage at the end of February showed the moment a Russian BMP infantry fighting vehicle of the 144 Brigade was destroyed after hitting two mines and being hit by an anti-tank weapon. 
The vehicle gradually comes to a stop after a large explosion which causes smoke to start billowing out of the vehicle. Almost the entire 155th Marine Brigade of 5000 was wiped out near Vuladar at the end of January when driving into minefields of American-supplied remote anti-armor mines. Russian Defense Minister Sarjai Shoigu has nonetheless told commanders to take the town at all costs. But the tank division, as well as to Cossack units, appeared to have mutinied after repeated futile efforts. Justin Crump, a British military analyst, said of the Russian wave tactics, repeating the same thing time after time and hoping for a different outcome is a sign of madness. While the Institute for the Study of War notes that Ukrainian forces are likely now conducting a limited tactical withdrawal from the city of Bahamut, Ukrainian forces around Vuladar remain steadfast in their defense of the city. A report also noted that the Donetsk People's Republic commander Alexander Khodakovsky had questioned whether Russia forces would be prepared for a possible Ukrainian counterattack having in his words gotten carried away by Barmut and Vuladar. Ukraine's use of Soviet Aritium-62 anti-vehicle mines has been effective in the defense of Ukrainian towns and cities, but the provision of 7,200 US-supplied anti-armor mines have significantly reinforced the defensive lines. Able to be scattered from a distance, the ROMs allow the Ukrainian defenders to lay traps for advancing Russian armor from a distance, without laying them individually and by hand from within the minefields. The American RAAM mines involve firing a shell over an open area that scatters a cluster of tiny mines over a given area. The mine is a 155mm howitzer shell containing nine separate mines. Ukraine is bound to the 1997 Mine Ban Treaty, which prohibits use of anti-personnel mines. This does not prohibit the use of anti-vehicle mines or remote-controlled mines. Russia never signed the convention, known informally as the Ottawa Treaty, and is not obliged not to use such mines. The invaders have used at least seven types of anti-personnel mines in Donetsk, Kharkiv, Kiev and Sumy. Human Rights Watch claimed at the end of January that Ukraine had used so-called petal mines in and around the Ukrainian city of Izum, contrary to previous reports the country had not. They noted Russia had used these weapons in even greater numbers than Ukraine in a much more widespread fashion in different parts of the country, 